Hi there, grade eight. Uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. So the, the first lesson that I'm going to discuss with you in mathematics is about special products. And I'll be discussing particularly square polynomials. Now, in the last part of the lecture video, I want you to answer questions as regards to uh, squaring binomials. And I'm encouraging you to write your answer in the comment box. So as uh, so what I was saying, um, we'll be working on special products. So um, when we say special products, this will pertain to multiplication of polynomials. Why is it called a special? Because um, there will be special patterns that I'm going to introduce to you as we work on special products. And um, these special patterns, of course, are not applicable to all multiplication of polynomials. So the first special product that I'm going to introduce is the square of binomials. So with the square of binomials, it's necessary that you consider the term square as well as binomials. So when we say binomials, so these are polynomials with two terms. So if you remember, a term is always separated by a plus or a minus sign. Now, when we say square, we square an expression, meaning we multiply that expression twice by itself. So we're going to square binomials and we're going to make use of a formula or pattern for us to easily perform that operation. But we have to recall first the area of a square as well as the area of a rectangle because um, we'll be working on these formulas as we um, work on the pattern for square of binomials. Now, um, let's consider this square. So let's assume that uh, this is a perfect square, okay? And um, if the length of this uh, square, so we know that a square has four equal sides and the length of this square, for example, is S or the dimension of the square is S. So the area has to be S squared. So this is what we're going to explore um, as we work on the pattern for uh, square of binomials. Now, um, what if we're going to divide the square into different regions such that we come up with one big square, one small square, and then two rectangles of the same figure? Okay. Now, um, of course, you will agree with me uh, as we divide this um, square into different regions. And you will agree that the sum on the area of each region, of course, must be equal to the area of this original square. And with that, we're going to um, equate um, the, the area on the sum as well as the area of the original square here, and we will relate this with the square of binomials. Now, if we're going to consider, or for example, assign the dimension from here up to here to x units, and from here to here to y units. Now, you will all agree that the side of this square is equal to x plus y. So as we get the area, that square, from the formula on the area of a square, so the area of that square is equal to quantity x plus y square. So as we expand this binomial, this is also the same with multiplying x plus y twice by itself. But we will not do that because this is a longer solution. But later, we will verify as to uh, multiplying the two binomials using the distributive property of multiplication will come up with the same um, derivation that we're going to work with, okay? Now, um, you agree that the area of each region here, as we get the sum, is equal to the area of the big square here, which is actually the square of x plus y. So, we're going to place the sum 
on the area of each region on the right side of the equation and then simplify. So that will be our pattern in working on the square of binomials. Now, so let's work on the area of this big square. If the dimension is x units, so the area must be x squared. Oh, I guess I have to change the color to a darker one. So let's let's temporarily um make use of block. So this has to be x squared. And this rectangle of the same um size with another rectangle here, if this is y, it should be x. So the dimension based from the area of rectangle is length times width. So we have xy here or yx. And then this must be xy also. Okay, now the area of this small square must be y squared. Now, combining the area of each region and equate on the left side of the equation, so we'll come up with um, x squared plus xy plus xy plus um, y squared. And then the middle terms here are similar, so we can combine them. So we have quantity x plus y squared equals x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. So this will be the pattern that we're going to use whenever we square a binomial. And let us um, work on each variable being used here for us to really um, come up with the square of binomial correctly. Now the x here is the first term of the binomial while the y here is the second term of the binomial. And when we square this binomial, we'll come up with three terms. Now take note class that the first and the last terms are actually the square of the first and the last terms of this binomial respectively. So we just have to square the first term. So we come up with the first term here. And then we'll square the, the, the second term. We'll come up with the last term here. Now the middle term is actually the product of the two terms. That's why we have x, y here. But you have to know that it has to be doubled. That's why we have a constant two factor here. Now in the event that the operation of this binomial is subtraction, automatically the, the middle term will be a minus sign. Why? Because we are multiplying two unlike signs, like we are multiplying positive x and negative y, and then we multiply that by two, so we'll come up with negative two. Now, regardless if this is a plus or a minus sign, still the last term will remain as positive because any negative expression when raised to an even power will come up with a positive value. So we're going to use this pattern in working on these exercises. Okay, so this will be the pattern that we're going to follow in solving for each of these exercises. So let's just make use of a lighter color. Now in the first example, I will substitute the given in the formula. Take note that our 3M here class is our x. So we have to square the first term. So this is like squaring 3m and then plus. So there is a constant 2 factor here. Take note. So this is 2. So this is 2 times the first term, which is 2m times the last term. And then plus. So it's the square of the last term here. So it has to be squared. So we have square of 3m is 3m times 3m. So we have 9m squared here. And then this is 2 times 3 times 5. So we have 30m and then plus 25. Take note class that this is positive. So it has to be positive as well.
while so this has to be um positive as well i'm i'm referring to the middle term now um in number 2 until number 10 i'm we're going to write the answer without substituting the given. So we have, what's the square of 4x? So this is actually um, square of the first term. So this is 4x times 4x. So we have 16x squared. And then since this is a minus sign, the middle term must be a minus sign. And for you not to forget the, two, the, the, the constant 2 factor here, you just make use of the exponent. And then you start by multiplying 2 to the first term times the second term. So take note that the second term is negative. That's why this will be a negative value. So this is 2 times 4. So this is 8 times 5, 40. And then you place side by side the variable x, y. And then the last term is the square of negative 5y. So this is negative 5y times negative 5y. So you have plus 25 y squared. So that's the answer. So what's the square of the first term 2a? So that's 2a times 2a. So you have 4a squared. And then 2 times 2a times 3b. So you'll have plus 12ab. And then the last term 3b must be squared. So you have 3b times 3b. So that gives you 9b squared. And then here, square the first term. So that's 5h times 5h. So that gives you 25h squared. And then this must be minus sign because 2 times 5h times negative 7km gives you a negative value, which is negative 70hkm. And then we'll square the last term. So what's the square of negative 7km? So it's 49 a squared, m squared. And then here, square of 11n is 121 n squared. And then 2 times 11n times negative 2 for the middle term. So we have negative 44n. And lastly, what's the square of negative 2? So this is plus 4. For number six, what's the square of p? So it's p squared. And then the middle term is 2 times p times 4. So we have 8p here. And then 4 squared is 16. For number seven, square of 9w is 9w times 9w. So we have 81w squared. And then the middle term again is 2 times 9 times 2. So this is 36 W. And then what's the square of the last term? So this is 4. And then first term, square of the first term. So it's square of 3xy squared. So this must be 9x squared y to the fourth. And then this is 2 times the first term times the last term. So we have 2 times 3 is 4 times uh, 2 times 3 rather is 6 times 2 that gives you 12 and then x y squared z and then we'll square 2 I mean 2z so this is 4z squared for number 9 this is 8y times 8y so this gives you um, 64 sorry so this is 64 y squared and then the middle term is 2 times the first term times the last term. So this is 16y plus the square of 1 is 1 times 1. So for number 10, what's the square of c? So this is c squared. And then um, 2 times c times negative 5. So this is negative 10c. Well, the square of the last term, which is square of negative 5, is 25. So this is how easy we square a binomial. So we just have to follow the pattern. First, we have to square the first term and then plus twice the product of the two terms. 
and then plus the square of the last term. Again, if it's sum of a square, it has to be a plus sign. If it's difference of a square, it has to be a minus sign. Okay? Now, the last part will be, so this is what you're going to work. So you're going to work on the square from number 6 to number 10, and then provide your answer in the comment box. So separate your answer by commas, like you write, you write 6, then your answer, comma, and then um, number 7, comma, number 8, comma, and then number 9, your answer, comma, up to you reach 10. So you write all your answers in the comment box. So I hope you understood the, the discussion as regards to um, square up binomial. So more special products will be discussed in the next discussion. So for uh, goodbye for now.